How's it going YouTube? Formar Ranch here today and as you can see behind me on this table I have a handful of electronics. Now here at Formar Ranch we love experiments so today I'm going to test and see how many electronics a bullet will go through and I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to start with small calibers and get larger as we go. Stay tuned guys. Just giving you guys a look at the targets that are going to be set up. We have four laptops, like I said, and two flat screen TVs. Now this one was obviously featured in a previous video. So what I'm going to do is cover this with paper on the front and on the back so we can know exactly where that bullet is passing through to make sure that it went through an area that hasn't really been shot up. But hopefully we'll catch the bullet in these previous electronics before it even makes it here. As far as the laptops go, since we're starting small, I'm going to go ahead and shoot through the thinnest part of the laptop just to get started. And then we can work our way up shooting through the back and the screen as we move our way up in caliber. First things first is going to be the 22 long rifle. And I'm going to be shooting that using the CMMG conversion bolt out of my AR-15. So if you haven't seen the video on how this cool little piece of equipment works, make sure to go check it out. It is already up on my channel. 22 long rifle. All right, so looking at it, we have full and complete penetration through the first laptop. The second laptop, the third laptop, went into the screen of the fourth, but look at that. The bullet stopped inside the fourth, which is actually, I was expecting a little bit more penetration, especially given how thin all these screens are, but the thinnest screen of them all actually caught that bullet. And actually, here it is and it's hot. That bullet actually bounced out of that screen so props to you HP you made a pretty nice laptop. Next up is going to be a handgun cartridge the 9mm shot out of my Smith & Wesson M&P 9 compact. Alright, so on the 9mm, something kind of weird actually happened. So we have the entry here, and as luck would have it, or misfortune I guess, for the purpose of this experiment, it went through the same hole in this laptop. Then it was traveling at a different angle, so it hit a different hole here, came right out, entered here. You can tell that it's starting to slow down because of all the deformation. The laptop's starting to absorb a lot more of the energy. Went into the bottom of this TV. Appears to have come out the back. And then after that, I actually cannot tell where it went. Now, because we went through the same hole before closing these screens up and trying to shoot through the entire laptop, I'm going to shoot one more time with the 9mm. And this is exactly why I wanted to go ahead and take another shot with the 9mm. So starting from the front, working our way back. Entry here, you can see I'm starting to mark off the old ones, otherwise it's going to get a little bit cluttered. Another entry, I'll show you the exits real quick. It's punching right through this Dell. Almost the same hole again, but went through a different spot. Entry down here. Exit. Entry right here. Back. Exit entry in towards the bottom of the TV and hopefully you guys can see this this deformation of the metal right there that is where the bullet stopped so this TV actually caught that nine millimeter bullet since nine millimeter did not work for us we're gonna bump it up a little bit to the 357 Magnum now it is true what they say everything is bigger in Texas this is a 357 however what makes this one special is that it actually has an eight round cylinder that's quite a bit of firepower. Additionally, the barrel is ported, so I actually would equate this to about the recoil of a 9mm because these holes here 
force the gases up, which counteracts with the recoil. So this is actually a pretty sweet shooting uh, revolver. This one is made by Taurus. For those of you that don't know, this is what a 9mm handgun cartridge looks like. We'll go ahead and compare it to a 357 Magnum. So, although the diameters are very, very similar as far as the bullet goes, the amount of powder that's in the 357 is quite a bit more. And this is actually a hollow point. So this is actually going to expand a little bit. So I'll give it the benefit of the doubt as far as penetration. This round is not made for penetration. However, it is packing quite a bigger punch. So we're going to go ahead and shoot this and see how it does. Taking a look at the 357, easy penetration through the first few layers of laptops. But you can see it's losing a lot of energy. It's slowing down pretty fast because that soft, the hollow point, it's soft and it expands. So it's not going to penetrate quite as well as that FMJ 9mm round. Now what's really interesting is when it got to this last laptop, this laptop is pretty much destroyed now. And the reason for it is because since it is slowing down, all that energy is going into what it's hitting now. It's not taking much with it. It is literally letting all that energy go into the laptop. And so for that reason, it's not traveling through as fast. This laptop took a lot more damage. And then finally, it actually stopped right here. The bullet, or what left of it, is left of it, is uh, lodged right there in the TV. All right, so before we destroy these laptops to the point that we cannot use them, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the uh, rifles that I have out here with me today. And because of that, I'm going to go ahead and start switching th to shooting through both sides of the laptop. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, what really gets penetration is speed. And the 9mm, for example, shoots a little bit over 1,000 feet per second, whereas the rifle I'm about to shoot shoots about 3,000 feet per second. So it's three times faster, therefore I expect it to punch through these without any problem. First up on the rifle is going to be the 5.56 round. Now this is just your regular 55 grain full metal jacket. This is not one of the steel core penetrating rounds. However, if this doesn't make it through, we'll switch to a steel core penetrating round before moving up. Looking at the regular full metal jacket 5.56 round, quick and easy penetration in the beginning. It's going straight through, not making a very big hole, but right here, again, it's starting to lose some energy, starting to lose speed. We got two holes here, it's breaking apart on us. Still looks like two fragments, the bullet may have separated and it's going through. Let's go ahead and take a look around here. What is interesting on this is it is somewhere in the keyboard. It actually did not penetrate. So a regular 5.56 full metal jacket is stopping after four laptops. So what was just stopped by four laptops was this 55 grain full metal jacket. Now what we're going to try next is a 62 grain, which means it's a little bit heavier of a bullet, but you'll notice this green tip. This has a steel core. These are known as the steel core penetrator rounds. This one that we fired earlier has a lead core. So lead, as you know, is a soft metal. When it went through these TVs and laptops, it deforms and it breaks up. That's why there were the two holes. Part of the bullet broke apart, and that makes it lose a lot of penetration power. This has a steel core, so it's made to punch through things, specifically uh, you know, for military applications, body armor, or things of that nature. However, this is still legal on the civilian market, and we're going to go ahead and test it today. All right, so taking a look at the steel core penetrator, went in through here. Show you. Not a very big hole. Took out one of the keys. Went straight through. Now here's where things get interesting. You'll notice that it's not really a circle anymore. That is because something that the round struck has caused it to now start tumbling, and this is called keyholing. So it it's now going through the laptop sideways, and because of that. It's going to be expelling a lot more energy, making a lot bigger hull. Now that's actually not at all what I was expecting. However, it is a pretty interesting result. So it's now tumbling. And that's why they say the 5.56 round is so deadly. Even though it's small, it starts to tumble when it hits things. So 
it is lodged somewhere in here, which is totally the opposite of what I expected. I expected more penetration because that is what it's advertised to do. However, that is not the result we're getting. So I'm gonna go ahead and try one more of those rounds. One more of these steel core penetrators. So taking a look, it did go all the way through this first laptop, right through the Dell badge into the next Dell badge. At first I thought maybe this one came off here and pushed that hard into this laptop, but that was part of that. And a bunch of destruction in here. We're losing keys and pieces all over the place. Through there. As you can see, we're starting to really fragment quite a bit. It's taking a lot of it with it. Out through there and Looks like we are actually through this one and bits and pieces went into this laptop but didn't quite make it all the way through. So that's two in a row. I'm going to go ahead and call that one done, the steel core penetrator. It stops after four laptops. Now last up today is going to be the 308. So this is a 145 grain full metal jacket. It's that Monarch brand that I like to use because it's cheap to shoot. And just comparing the size, so this was 55 grains and this is again 145 grains. And so basically this is three times the weight, which is approximately the same speed. And if you guys remember back from science class way back when, force equals mass times acceleration. So the acceleration is roughly the same, but three times the mass gives you about three times the force. 308. Okay, so looking at the 308, clean entry in here goes through and then once again starting to go sideways a little bit it's a big destruction on the inside as expected the hole is getting bigger as it slows down and expends more energy now it looks like completely sideways and yep there it is so it's pretty much dropping all its energy in the laptop at this point it fragmented went through the screen knock the TV over and there is what's left of the bullet actually wedged kind of to the outside there and then whatever continued going through knocked that TV off the table. 308 made it through all those electronics with a little bit of spacing in between so how about we find out what happens when we take the spacing out. Now, flipping through this pile of shredded up laptops. Looks like the 308 is going through and it went through all of them. All right, so before I go today, I had a viewer leave a comment saying they wanted to see my phone being shot by a revolver. So while we are in the spirit of destroying electronics today, I still have the 357 out here and one more bullet. I do appreciate when you guys leave comments. Please uh, continue to leave comments if you want to see anything. And like I said, I will try to make that happen like I am today. Especially as my channel is starting, I really appreciate any feedback that you guys will give me. This is kind of neat. You can see straight through the phone as well as the laptop. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Definitely done, but pretty much just made a clean punch right through the razor. There you have it. Your phone is not bulletproof in your pocket. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. Like if you liked and enjoyed what you saw, and subscribe to make sure you stay tuned for future content. Huge shout out to my friends Alex and Christian for donating those laptops that I got to shoot. So you guys rock. Thanks for supporting the channel. And as always, guys, have a good one.